This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by the 2012 Ford Mustang. Time to get our HD Nation on. Hey, you know what? We're going to start off today with a post from the forums that caught our eye. Momentary Laps wrote, Best home theater setup currently using a TiVo. Must have. Multi-stream cable card ability. Online videos with some sort of option to record automatically. Ability to play MKV, AVI, MP4, FLAC, etc. Little to no monthly charges for guide data, internet browsing, and a wireless keyboard. Would be awesome if it can play ISOs, had internet access to setting up recordings and accessing previously recorded shows, and true un compressed multi-channel audio streaming quote I have several quadraphonic albums converted to digital basically momentary lapse wants all the options he has with the TiVo but to add the ability to mount a virtual drive for ISOs and surf all the internets on his TV. Hmm. He doesn't want much. He wants a home theater PC. That's exactly what he wants. <laughs> and you know what? We love the folks over at Puget Systems, and they make beautiful, quiet, efficient home theater PCs. Mm -hmm. uh, their Echo line is actually really, really cool. I love this. Actually, their Echo 3, which includes a Core i5, or, or i3 or i5, and we've shown this off before. Compact, you can load this thing up with all sorts of features. Uh, plenty of RAM options, tuner options, uh, modems, Blu-ray drives, SSDs if you really want to take it up. And of course, it'll be running Windows 7. Of all the features that you want on the system that you're thinking of, it's the cable card part that really, I don't know any other way to do it other than to say go with Windows 7. Uh, Multi-stream cable card action is pretty easy nowadays. Uh, anyone using Seton, Silicon Dust, or other tuners. If you're using this in anything besides a Windows 7 Media Center and it's actually working, I want to know about it. But <laughs> I. I that, that's the one limitation. For everything else you just right. listed, you could do that under Linux, you could do it under OS X. Uh, it's just the cable card part, and for that, that really requires, I think, a Windows 7 system. Now, uh, I've built my own computer at home, and what I'm running is a box based upon what they call the uh, Thermaltake Luxa 2 LM100 mini case. This is basically a small case. That's about the size, t about as tall as a Coke can, you could say. And that'll hold a mini ITX motherboard, and actually I'm using the Core i3 2100T Sandy Bridge part that runs a whole 35 watts of TDP on that, the max TDP anyway. It's an Intel motherboard in there, uh, four gigs of RAM, Intel SSD with a one or two terabyte Western Digital Black Drive for extra storage. The Seton tuner, that's the big one. That gives me the cable card, quad tuning cable card, and I'm able to then distribute that over a network if I want as well. It's running Windows 7 because I don't know what else does. Uh, some of the other software though that I use to control the whole thing, uh, one is a beautiful program called dun, 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 <laughs> Hippo Remote Pro. Uh, my favorite remote over IP smartphone app. I actually have this app running on my on my uh, iPhone and it gives me, in this case I have a Windows Media Center uh, controller pulled up. It also includes you know full playback controls. So you can even see the green button down there in the corner. Uh, and the other app I love a lot for basically remote administration and mm -hmm. viewing is something called Remote Potato. Uh, <laughs> this is another app I have on my iPhone. It can also run on the iPad as well. I can also log in with a browser, and this gives me not only the ability to browse my electronic programming grid, as you see there, I can search my channels, do whatnot. Uh, here's my scheduled recordings for, I think it was last night, and it also also can stream my recorded shows to either a computer or my handheld device. Hmm. Uh, I love that. Now for doing my movies and stuff, oh there's a channel guide if I actually I forgot to record something I can actually go into this guide, select the show, hit the record button, it doesn't matter where I am in the world and it just goes right back to that computer that's sitting in my in my living room which is great and I've got that effectively running, well except for the software, uh, not a lot of expense there but it's stuff that's pretty much built in and you can use and set up for free. Now as far as my my movies and stuff go. Now, I've ripped everything to an ISO file, and let me just pull up a picture here of doo -doo -doo -doo, my movies. I've talked about this program quite a bit, actually. Uh, for my movie setup, I went ahead and created uh, ISO images, and this software, which is free to use, there are some additional features you can incorporate for fee, and they make it really easy to do that, but this essentially takes my ISO files, goes out and finds the appropriate album art, and it organizes it into this list uh, of, in this case, four high by you know scrolling deep. And I'm able to scroll through these, click on them, and essentially launch the movie and watch it streamed from a NAS device that's on my local network to the home theater PC. And then it plays back using my favorite playback software, uh, ArcSoft's Total Media Theater Player. It seems to be the one that's I, the reason I ended up selecting that particular <laughs> software over a couple other packages that are out there is it had HD DVD support. Right. 
really quirky on my end. So that, I needed that, and it actually supports my ISOs for HD DVD as well. I also threw in a, uh, a Bluetooth adapter onto the computer as well, so I could do a wireless keyboard. I just didn't want to use one of the little dongles with 2.4 gigahertz or whatever. But <laughs> anyway, you can build this sort of stuff yourself. And, it, and like I said, I put a lot of work into this box I put together. And if that's not the case, if you're not that inclined, companies like Puget Systems are awesome for this kind of thing. Yes, they are. At Josh Lambert tweeted in, at Robert Heron, hey, is there a way to send a video TV tuner from my main home theater PC to my other home theater PCs? Keep the Texilla coming. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Two products. Uh, they're what you call network-enabled tuners. Uh, one, uh, uh, basically, <laughs> for cable TV tuning, uh, each of the four tuners in Seton Corp's Infiniti V4 product, their cable card adapter, can be assigned to individual Windows 7 computers on that local network. Now, for over-the-air recording, uh, Silicon Dust's HD Home Run streams live TV also across the local network. And that feed is actually compatible with a wide variety of players, uh, software, and OS platforms as well. Uh, those are the two I know of out there. And I don't think there are any other cable card tuners that are doing the, the network addressable. Are there any cable card tuners worth using, period? Well, those two. Those two are the right. big ones. And they're actually the only ones I know of. I know that Seton's working on a six or eight tuner version of their product. And we'll probably see that at CES. Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious to see what else. A I'm screens. really waiting for some sort of IP return for cable card products right. so that we can do two-way communication to enable things like video on demand and your uh, on-demand services because that's the one thing you really miss out on that you're unable to access with cable card compared to a standard set-top box. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I don't think cable, I'm not holding my really like cable card is really like cable card. Gita Wright said, I had this ongoing argument with my dad about why I watch standard def channels in the 4-3 aspect ratio with black bars to the left and right, a.k.a. pillar bars. He says I should have it in 16 by 9, but that, of course, stretches oh. the picture, yeah. which really bothers me and bothers me. He got a new Samsung 32-inch LCD TV on Black Friday and actually read through the manual, which said that watching broadcasts in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio can cause screen burn-in. So now he's ranting and raving that I'm wrong for not having every at 16 by 9. I have a Samsung 46 inch LED TV. Should this be a concern to me? I don't watch SD for hours on end since I use the TV as a monitor for my home theater PC, and I do watch Blu rays and DVDs often enough. Is there a difference between his LCD and my LED TVs as far as usage over time? Please shed some light on this for me. I'm tired of my dad thinking that I'm a fool for watching SD programs in the proper 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Regards, Gina from Chicago. Gina, your dad is, is right. wasting <laughs> his voice. <laughs> nah. No. Hey, uh, So-called screen burn, a.k.a. permanent image retention, is something typically associated with the uneven wear of the light-emitting phosphors that are basically in the pixels of a plasma display. Or an old CRT. Old CRTs, too. Big Those are also phosphor-based displays. Uh, basically, the, the phosphor's excited, it glows, <laughs> and if you wear those phosphors unevenly, you can yeah. get patches that don't illuminate as brightly, creating kind of a wear pattern that you can actually see. And as Gina's dad discovered, LCD manufacturers like Samsung, they include a similar warning with their LCD televisions as well, suggesting that you shouldn't leave a static image on the screen for prolonged periods of time. Oh, wait, wait, was that static image? Static imagery. They they want <laughs> every pixel in that screen to wear evenly. And right. I have seen a static picture leave a permanent mark on an LCD. The most extreme case I've ever seen was at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas. Uh, they have an installation of several hundred, maybe thousands of sharp LCDs that were all configured yeah. to show things like Kino and other betting games as well as general hotel info. Every LCD in that place that displayed a mostly static image exhibited obvious wear patterns. And right. it probably took a year or two for it to get as bad as it did. But those are like Kino in yellow letters on a blue background. <laughs> but something that just wasn't moving. Hard white lines, right. too, that are fully illuminated. And eventually, you say it was a grid for a Kino board, eventually you'd see that grid no matter what picture yeah. was up there. And the bottom line really is, uh, I don't worry about it so much with LCDs and uneven pixel wear as I do with plasma televisions. And occasional 4x3 viewing on your LCD really won't hurt a thing. <laughs> that said, do check your, L your flat panel, though, for a letterbox or a pillar bar setting that can automatically adjust the color or the brightness of the bars themselves to minimize uneven wear. Pioneer Plasma's implemented this in their, in their long since respected and long gone displays, but they would actually analyze what's in the 4x3 section and then adjust the gray level on mm -hmm. the bars to match that so that the whole plasma wore evenly. What a great idea! And I yeah. think, actually, Samsung does that, too, on their new displays as well, but... I gotta say, I... Watching four by three content stretch to sixteen by nine makes me want to kick oh, no. things. I don't think you should ever really do that. I'm okay, fortunate I just, enough to I have mean, a video processor that'll just stretch, stretches the whole image, uh, vertical and horizontal. Yeah, axis. But then you end up losing the 
the you can. part of the original. Unless you're watching something like the History Channel where they'll show four by three letterbox <laughs> content, and that's a whole other story. But Use your pillar bars, Gina. <laughs> it's okay. It is. On an LCD, I'm gonna let it slide this time, and I'm glad you're mixing up the different formats. Tell so your not, dad to back off. If you're watching only four by three and you left that TV for a couple of years, I'd be worried. Yeah, especially if you paused it on, on one static image Don't for several that. years. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Ford. And to do that, we've pulled Veronica back in to give Pat a run for his money. The Mustang is back, people. It's in-house, it's in our hands, I have the key. And we're gonna do a little head-to-head -head with my Mustang versus Veronica's Mustang. We built them out in the customizer, the fabulous 2012 Ford Mustang GT500 action here, getting my Shelby Cobra on. Yeah, and you know what's really nice? Is once you've actually gone through your car, you can actually go through, because you may, if you're like me, forget some of the details, the lust overcomes the memory, and it's like, okay, I've got my body kit on here, it's a standard Cal special. Grabber blue of the color, standard door handles, I'm just eliminating the chrome here, and keeping it simple. <laughs> I'm the guy whose tail lights you're gonna be seeing because this car is gonna be that fast. Ooh, I what see did, what you did there. What did you pack your Mustang with? Um, let's see, I think I did the same body type as you. I did the Cal Special Fascia. Fascia? Fascia. Fascia. Mm -hmm. um, I, got, I did my nice custom color, kind of like a, a burgundy, perhaps a Merlot, if you will. Burgundy, please. A burgundy tell me with some black trim on there. That's I got stylish. the. <laughs> that look good at night. Yeah, I got the, I matched the door handles. Originally I had the chrome handles, but I decided I wanted it to be seamless. I completely understand. Seamless. I've got the standard fuel door. I've got the uh, painted billet grill. Um, you can tell I don't know much about cars, but I know what I like, <laughs> and I like how this car looks at this point. Well, what's awesome is you can basically, it's, if you can click, you can basically find the features you want, especially when you're going through wheels. It's nice mm -hmm. to actually have wheels on a picture of a car yeah. where it looks realistic, unlike certain websites where you can buy wheels from. It's 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 fun. And how, how are you doing so far in your wins versus losses? I'm like at 50%. I'm 53%. Ooh. I'm a little, I've, I've done pretty well for myself. Uh -huh. I have eight wins and seven losses. 53%. And this, ladies and gentlemen, oh, is yeah. how it looks when you put it on the big screen. Get in and build your own Mustang, people. See how it stacks up against the rest of the internet. And we want to thank, once again, Ford and the 2012 Mustang, which I really enjoy driving, for sponsoring Techzilla.